Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 video. And it's been a while since we actually did one of these rankings, so now that we've finally finished up with Season 5, I figured, eh, why not? What the hell? And so today, we'll be making our way through Season 5 and ranking the villains. But before we get to that, we should probably go ahead and sort of explain the rules here. Explain what we're looking for from the villains, and usually when I make these sorts of videos, I'll look at a number of different factors. There's a lot to pick from, really. Best villain ranking. You could go with powers. Are their powers interesting slash cool? Does the villain have an impact on the story and create a compelling episode? Do they have much success against the heroes? Originality could play into things too, and then extra points for rule of cool, and of course, are they useful in Gabe's quest to get his hands on the Miraculouses? And it's this final element that I think is going to be my most crucial criteria. Because ultimately, it's with that goal in mind that Gabe even akumatizes people to begin with. So, I think it makes the most sense to factor that in as the majority reason for the ranking. And I mean, yeah, other elements can play into it too, but they're lesser in my eyes. And so, let's get rocking, shall we? And as always, we'll start with the trash tier. There's no particular order to this. It's more tiered than anything else, but here we go. It's time. The trash. And as always, Glaciator, come on down. I'm an Andre hater. There you are. For starters, Andre's just pure cringe. Pretty self-explanatory there. Dude got akumatized because his real-life shipping of actual teenagers didn't pan out the way he wanted it to. And on top of that, as a villain, he sucks and he has a massive weakness that he can't overcome. He can melt and it just destroys his power. That's pretty lame. On top of that, he's slow and unwieldy. And even with the extra tiger power granted by Gabe, as well as Gabe going back in time, numerous times to try to help him out, he ends up getting blitzed by the heroes, again and again and again. All he does is blow up a couple buildings. Big whoop, what a joke. Because in the end, he just feels like a whole lot of bluster, and he never really stood a chance at all. And also, he's a repeat villain from a previous season, so more points deducted for lacking originality. He's not compelling. His episode was completely just about Marinette and Adrian. He was just the lame backdrop for them to work through their feelings. Get out of here. Next up in the trash tier, we'll go to Soul Destroyer. A cool, punerific name and an interesting design. And honestly, that's all she's got. That's legit it. Yeah, she has the power to turn people into shoes, but look at the reality of things here. She's an afterthought. In her own episode, an afterthought. Gabe's the true villain. He's the one that actually does stuff. And in fact, during the course of the episode, she gets overpowered by the resistance. A bunch of no-powered teenagers wielding condiments take her down. Yeah. No chance you're going to make it out of the trash tier. <laughs> Not even the focus of your own episode, and you'll lose to the sidekicks. No, scratch that. Not even the sidekicks. The depowered extra characters. Oof, that's got to hurt. We can then chuck in Ryukamori. Like, a giant cloud monster that wields the power of the dragon and can't be attacked by conventional means. Hell yeah, that's really strong. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking. At least, that's what I thought at first. But then upon closer inspection during the episode, what is the point of having an akumatized villain that doesn't want to follow your instructions, doesn't even want to get the Miraculouses, and can't even see anybody? Let's be honest with one another here. It's pretty damn stupid. She looks cool, interesting vibes, but as a villain, she doesn't work. Like, how's she even going to get her hands on the Miraculouses? She can't do it. Even if she makes trouble for the heroes, she can't see them or their Miraculouses, so she can never pick them up. And she can't actually touch them either, so it's just a waste. I'm not really sure what Gabe was thinking with this one. Oh, and I think we can add, you know, the android mind-controlled people from the finale into this tier. Like, they were actual trash, actual dirt. Like, how... Oh. They overpowered some of the heroes, right? Through strength of numbers. But even then, how many of them got obliterated? Was it not pretty much everybody in the world trying to fight the heroes at once, and it took all of them to even give them a slight chance at winning? <laughs> nah, trash. Get out of here. Honestly, imagine working so hard to brainwash the majority of the people in the world, and they still mostly get clapped by a handful of heroes. Gabe. Gabe. How's this happening, son? How? Usually I'd at least bump them into a higher tier, simply based on their potential alone, but <laughs> no, this is a punishment ranking, get out of here with that. And so that's probably the extent of the trash tier, don't really think you could justify it going any further than that, and so from here on onwards, we're hitting the mid tier, villains and power sets that are decent enough, and verging on being ridiculously strong, but are perhaps lacking a little certain something that would push them into that high tier and beyond. Okay, so I guess we'll start off with Repost Prime. Repost? Repost? Something like that. It's about swords. And she's pretty decent, all things considered. She has a cool sword! Which, as far as weapons go, you know, swords are very cool. Very strong. I like swords. 
I mean, some of the villains, they actually get some pretty dumb shit as weapons, so in my eyes, a sword's top tier. But her powers are letting her down a little bit. I mean, she gets the turtle power, which is good, very good, in its normal form. But this time, I'm pretty sure she has to hit you with the sword first, and unlike a lot of powers gifted by Monarch, for some reason, she's not allowed to spam it. So if she traps one hero, she has to keep them there, and she can't use her power again when fighting the second hero. And to me, it just feels like a gap in her abilities that makes her less useful. And on top of that, having to actually hit them with a sword instead of shoot it out at them like Carapace can, that's a big time minus for me as well. So it's good, but not great. And so here she belongs. And I think next we can go Hoaxer. And yeah, I hesitate to put her here, but what is her power? She can mind control people that have alliance rings. Yeah, but I don't think it gives those people special powers. Whereas the heroes are all ridiculously strong. Like, yeah, they don't want to hurt them too badly, but then on the other hand, I'm pretty sure they do stomp the shit out of some of these random people. And so when it comes down to it, the civilians really do have no chance at all. And on top of that, I don't think Hoaxer even had another power to begin with. And so in the end, there's not much she can do. I mean, having an army of mind-controlled goons is nothing to sniff at in my opinion, but it's not going to overpower the hero, so she belongs in this tier, I think. Then, Ikari doesn't. Okay, so when Kagami's mum first gets akumatized to test out the alliance rings, she turns into that giant centaur type thing with a massive ass sword, and then has the power of multiplication, which shrunk her a little bit, but gave her a massive advantage as well. After all, what's better than one giant? Multiple. She's pretty fast, pretty strong, but obviously not that strong as Ladybug does manage to knock her down, tie her up and destroy the sword and on top of that they easily avoid her in the maze of buildings and also defeating one of the giants defeats all of them at once. So probably not as good as she could have been in hindsight. Actually that's something I've often found. Whilst the concept of these giants is often intimidating, they pretty much always just do jack shit and get obliterated by Ladybug and Cat Noir in short order. I think it's more the crazy abilities and speed that often manages to get the drop on the heroes rather than being gigantic. And so, there she goes. And now, a more recent addition joins the ranks. King of Plastic. Basically, if he makes contact with you with his weapon, you turn into plastic. Which, yeah, that's pretty strong. But, one, if you do hit a hero with that, the Miraculous would just also turn to plastic, wouldn't it? Although, with that being said, he also just has Venom on the other side of his sword, spear, thing, which can simply freeze you and let him steal from you. But yeah, I don't think it's a game changer. It's good, but it's not great. It's just a decent power set, kind of like the episode it came from. It's decent enough, but nothing special, nothing memorable. Now let's move on. And then we go to Dark Humor. So Dark Humor can fly, which is a plus. But it's Kim, and Kim's the dumbest character in the show. So his chances of victory are drastically reduced. And also, compared to his previous Dark Cupid power-up, his power was nerfed. Nerfed dramatically. Like, the previous one could full-on mind control a hero. He does that to Cat Noir. This one just makes you kind of stupid. But even then, even stupid Cat Noir manages to interfere and buy Ladybug time to beat this dweeb. So, ugh, get out of here, Kim. You're trash. Gabe even has to reverse time at one point to give this dweeb a fighting chance. The powers and the weapon, in theory, are good. Oh, but giving it to Kim. Instant L. I was kind of tempted to chuck this in the trash tier for that alone, I'll be honest. But I've had mercy. And so, we move on. And this next one might be controversial, but I think we'll go with the big teddy bear dude. I honestly, I don't recall how to say his name. I think Kiku, Kuki, Ki, 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 Kiku, Kuki. And <laughs> anyway, dude seems like he has it all, right? He gets juiced up with multiple powers because for some reason the dude bought like five alliance rings. Still unsure as to why he did that. But then again, he's a boxer. Maybe he has brain damage. And he gets the power of the turtle, the tiger, the ox, the horse, and the mouse. That's a lot of powers. But once again, it's the curse of the giant and the curse of the brain damaged idiot. Because when you're fighting small people who go fast and can hide anywhere, you start to struggle. And you know, on top of that, with the brain damage, he's a bit of a dumbass. And he gets beaten by two rookie level heroes when they swap miraculouses. Not impressive, but his power set keeps him in this mid-tier. Okay, so I think we can move on to high tier now. So in no particular order, of course. First up, we go with Matagi Gozen. Pretty much the same as Ikari Gozen. Or Ikari Dozen, but better because it has more powers. You know, really strong character, simple as that. But it's not a busted god tier level. 
and has the same weaknesses as literally every other giant character. But, you know, not good enough for God tier, I'm afraid. Next, we'll go Darker Al. Dude's basically Batman, but super old, super fat, and super strong. As in, superhumanly strong. And on top of that, he can shoot the power of the pig at you, which makes people live out their daydreams, and lets him capitalize, which we do see him try to do to the heroes during his appearance. It's a pretty strong move, but it can be dodged, and, well, you can break out of it. And I think it's realistic to say you can beat him without plot armor. After all, they beat him with the force of Iron Will, which ties into the Batman thing. We'll chuck Miss Bustier in here next. She has a badass weapon, a guillotine whip thing, hell yeah, can cut through basically anything and turns you into a balloon if she hits you. And the balloons are mind controlled and help her fight. And on top of that, she's visibly pregnant which would make any reasonable person think twice about ever attacking her. Very good power set. Safari. Next up, you gotta go Safari. Total badass. Homing crossbow that hits the heroes with a venom bolt. Not too shabby at all. Almost manages to win at one point. But of course, in the end, the heroes were able to overcome her by swapping Miraculouses so she couldn't track them properly anymore. And I think she's dragged down by the fact that Adrian, who never, ever, ever gets the win, was actually the one to engineer this victory. So, ooh, no god tier for you. And also, no real plot armor was required here. They beat her fair and square. I think the only time there was plot armor is when Marinette wakes up when Adrian removes her Miraculous instead of still being frozen, which she should have been. After all, we see the same thing happen to Bunnix and she stayed frozen, but okay. To me, that's never made sense. So we'll chuck Safari in high tier. And we'll put gold record here too. Dude can teleport and beat you in one hit, and the only thing that stops him from hitting that god tier of being pretty much unbeatable is that he's an idiot and waits for ages listening to whatever the record says instead of just blitzing everybody in sight with his power. And so, very short, but that was the high tier because there's so much god tier on offer. Season 5 had so many overpowered villains, the type of characters that are only beatable through bullshit shenanigans that feel forced by the writers instead of making much sense. There's Manipula, who has wax figures of the heroes, complete with their powers, as well as the ox power-up for herself, which pretty much makes her unstoppable, until she gets conveniently crushed by a chandelier and forgets that being akumatized also gives you a base level of super strength. We see villains and heroes get tossed through walls, onto cars, out windows, onto the concrete, and just get up and go, whew, like they're Charlie Chaplin. But the falling chandelier finishes her off. Nah, she should have swept the board, I'm sorry. And so she hits the big time, god tier. Pharaoh 2.0, with his book of truth, unlimited use of the turtle power, hell yeah, as well as having an impenetrable maze that requires knowledge that you can literally only get through using time travel. This dude is so stacked that it takes bullshit, timey-wimey shenanigans to beat him. And on top of that, Ladybug conveniently is able to speak to a past user to help her out of this. And even then, even then, he chooses to lose. He doesn't actually get beaten because they can't beat him. He's god tier. Ada, she whoops ass. That is without a doubt. She's a mega robot with a brain so much more powerful than Ladybug and Cat Noir's. Realistically, they had no chance ever. They could never properly beat this thing. Remember, when Markov was akumatized, whilst fighting Ladybug and Cat Noir, he switched his focus to flip the script on Gabe and whoop his ass. And then in his base form, he helped bring back the dinosaurs. Ada is supposed to be smarter than him. GG heroes, GG. If she hadn't realized Claudie was still there, Marinette was toast. Next up is Vanisher, but with the dog power. And realistically, she should never have made herself known, right? Just cause a disturbance, wait for the heroes, and ambush them by touching the jewel before anyone can react. Then steal it. Obviously, that's not what happens. But I feel like the potential for this character was so strong, it could have been god tier. Mm. In hindsight, maybe it belongs in high tier because she never does anything like this and Sabrina is an idiot. Next one up is Mare, Chloe. She wins. She straight up wins. Until Marinette and Adrian evolve their powers and somehow reverse their detransformation halfway through. But not before it goes unrealistically slowly. <laughs> Usually the detransformation's instant, but this time it's slowly peeling away on their hands. We have to fight it, Cat Noir! Resist! No, that's bullshit. That's Asterix's hand on the scale for Chloe's last hurrah. He had to make her look like a fool and a weakling one last time before sending her off. She had it all. She had the battle bots, all the powers, powerproof shields, the heroes about to detransform inside said shields in front of everybody in Paris, Lila in her ear with the schemes, but she's defeated by bullshit. Typical. Moving on, we've got full powered monarch with all the miraculouses, including time travel at one point, and he somehow fumbles it all and loses 
because suddenly, for one moment only and never again, his motivations, which had been clear for four seasons to save his wife, changed on the fly to be revenge, only to immediately change back once he lost the rabbit miraculous. And then finally, we have Felix slash Argos, who, well, he just wins, doesn't he? He literally wins his episode and pretty much every appearance he makes. Dude doesn't know how to take an owl. Plot-armored heroes hate him. They can't compete with this guy. He even beats Ladybug on the reg. Beast. And so, <laughs> there we go. I think that's all the villains by my count. I think I have might have missed some, but I've not noticed any. I did comb through the wiki, so if I have missed any, let me know. And so, yeah, what do you reckon? You like my list? Maybe not. Maybe you'd change some, move some up or down. I'm curious to hear what you have to say, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.